Commissioner Pico? Here. Commissioner Robbins? Here. Commissioner Huber? Here. Commissioner Von Hoff? Here. Commissioner Henches? Here. Commissioner Watts Watson? Here. Next thing is the introductions. Uh, right to my left is Brett Davis, our planning manager. Rachel Nosberg is our uh, deputy clerk. Marty Schmidt is our zoning manager. Greg Wagner is our seat, uh, principal planner. And I don't see Nathan. Tom Wolf here is our. Oh, there he is. He's right there. Nathan Hall is our associate planner, and Tom Wolf is our commissioner. Okay. First thing on the agenda then is approval of the March 11th, uh, 2024 uh, meeting minutes. Everybody's had on the board has had a chance to review those minutes. Any changes, or additions, or corrections? If that, if not, uh, do I have a motion to uh, approve the March 11th meeting? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, meeting minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Not in favor say nay. Minutes are approved. The other item on our agenda is uh, a request to approve a variance from the required 45 foot building height maintenance in the I 2 district to 103 feet to construct a material processing building, uh, Cambria Real Estate Holdings LLC, and applicant in Great Plains Sand, uh, Sands LLC, property owner in section 33 of Louisville Township. And Marty, you want to present to the board? I will, Mr. Chairman. So on the screen is a site location map for the property Cambria has under purchase agreement from Shakopee Sand. So this is part of the Shakopee Sand Silica Sand Mining Facility. This is the northern portion of that property. It encompasses about 88 acres. It's located between State Highway 169 and the UP rail line here on the west side. This is the Minnesota River Valley floodplain. Most of this property is owned by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service out here. Um, property is zoned I-2, which is our heaviest industrial zoning. Currently, access to the site is off of 169 direct access. Here's an aerial photo of the property. Uh, the property does include the Shakopee Sand Mine Processing Building, which is located in this area here, and a maintenance building that's located a little bit further north. The silica sand piles that you see in this aerial photo have actually been used in the reclamation of the mine on the property, so they no longer are, are out there in, in this state. Um, we're going to go to the next photo here. So this is a site plan that Cambria provided. Um, in addition to the existing processing building that's located here and the maintenance building here, Cambria will be constructing a uh, rail served warehouse, approximately 80,000 square foot here to the north. We'll also be adding rail line up to that, that warehouse building. This warehouse building will be about 39 feet high, so it'll be less than the requirement of 45 feet in the industrial zone. They're also proposing to construct a processing building here to the south. It is this building that's over the 45 feet. The bulk of the building is about 62 feet high. However, there is a portion on the southern part of the building uh, where it needs to be uh, 103 feet high. That portion is 120 by 50, um, and it's meant to house equipment used in the processing of, of quartz material uh, in their operations. And a uh, representative of Cambria is here. If, if we have questions about that after my uh, presentation on, on why it needs to be that tall. Uh, in addition to the two buildings, Cambria would also be constructing a large container yard to the west of the processing building. This would be a paved container yard. Much of the material that will be coming from the site comes from mines Cambria has in Canada. These mines are more active, are active in the summertime. So you bring in a lot of material via rail in the summer, you process it, store it on site, and then wait till their uh, manufacturing facilities in Belle Plaine and the sewer need it, uh, and it'd have to have enough home house on site here to uh, feed those plants all year long. Here's a close-up of of the of the two two buildings uh, that are proposed for construction. This is the processing building again that that is requiring the variance. Initially, with initial construction, only the southern half of that processing building approximately will be built. The northern half will be built at a later date. 
uh, when, when demand requires that, that construction. This plan also shows the landscaping they're proposing. They're proposing a combination of overstory, coniferous, deciduous trees, ornamental trees, predominantly located along the public service road that would be part of the plat and conditional use permit here, the entrance to, the, to both properties, and then at the entrance to the properties as required by ordinance. So the staff is supportive of that landscaping plan. Um, here's a floor plan of the processing building. Again, only the southern portion of this building is going to be constructed. The building will be 62 feet tall. It is this portion of the building on the southern end that's 50 by 120 that actually extends up to the 103 feet in elevation. Here are um, side view elevations of the building. You can see the 120 foot section of the tall side of the building in these uh, elevations here, and then the 50 foot portion of that high side uh, on, on these two elevations here. Remember, these buildings will not be fully constructed at the beginning, so probably this this portion of the building would be constructed initially as would this. That would come at a, at a later date. Here are some uh, renditions showing the view of the property from various, various aspects. Uh, this first one shows view of the property kind of from 169 on the southern end of the property. Here's the rail, rail, where, rail, rail yard, or not the rail yard, the container yard here the new processing building, the old processing building located back here, the rail, rail served warehouse. This one is a view more from the north looking southwest, the rail warehouse processing building. This front rail line likely won't have any rail cars on it as it's used very little by the UP. I, I believe about one small train a week uses this, this particular rail line. This is a view of, of the property from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, area to the west, existing processing building, um, new processing building, new warehouse. And these are close-ups of the proposed processing building here, view number four. And then uh, this is the, the rail warehouse view number five. One of our as staff, one of our biggest concerns with the variance is we already have one tall building out there that uh, was used by Shakopee Sands for a number of years, has been out there since the 1980s. Uh, the existing processing building that they utilize is about 110 feet high. Uh, Cambria intends to use this building for a separate process independent of, of what is being done in the new processing building. Evidently, these two processes can't be intermingled. They have to be kept separate. Uh, staff has put a condition within the draft CUP that states um, if this existing processing building isn't utilized within three years or extension approved that it would need to be removed from the property. So if we're going to approve a taller building, we should at least have a use for the existing tall building on the property. It is not unheard of for variances to be approved in industrial areas. We have approved variances for other buildings. Uh, when there is a business need for those variances, we've approved variances for the Semstone building a little bit further south in Sand Creek Township a few years ago. And here about a year ago, maybe two years ago, we approved a variance for the interlock concrete expansion to their manufacturing facility, also in Sand Creek Township. So we, we have approved variances where business need dictates a need for those, uh, those variances. Staff is going to recommend that this body go ahead and take public comment here tonight, but we're asking that you don't take action on it. Louisville Township did not make a recommendation on this variance or the plat and CUP applications. Uh, they have some questions regarding, uh, predominantly regarding the road, uh, frontage road that would serve this property and they want more assurance and assurity that that thing will be constructed before they're ready to move ahead and make a recommendation. That likely could happen as soon as our May meeting. So this will in all likelihood be brought back to our May meeting, uh, but we would like you to go ahead and hold the public hearing, see what other comments might be out there, get any type of feedback this board might, might have uh, 
on this on this uh, variance request. Uh, the applicant is present, as is the township. If you would have any questions or comments for them. Okay, Marty, uh, recommending that we continue it after we take public hearing. Yes. Comments. Okay. Yep. Any questions from the board here, Mr. Chair? No. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, and I think I know the answer to this, but and maybe the applicant could tell us. There's a lot of talk about product processing, the need for height to process. Can we get an explanation of what exactly the product that he, he's processing is? Apple good. I know. But I know. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, before we ask that, uh, Marty, can you answer the question about what's the distance between the highway uh, 169 to where the tower, the existing tower, certainly is right now? Yards, feet. Quarter mile, half mile, <laughs> inches. inches. I'm, I'm going to say about a quarter mile. Quarter mile, okay. He's not asking centimeters. <laughs> and what's the height of that existing tower as it stands right now? Uh, approximately 110 feet. Okay, thank you. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Joel Peters. I'm with Cambria. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you for hearing our request. Uh, and just to build on that as well, I mean, Highway 169 is quite a bit higher than the site itself as well. So as you saw the aerials, obviously it's an aerial above the traffic. So if you're on the roadway or on Pika's property, you know, you're much lower. Um, but anyways, to the question about what's in the building itself, uh, it's what we'll be bringing in on the rail there is like a, for back, lack of better analogy, it's like a two inch minus rock. And then it'll get uh, conveyed up to the top of that tower and the reason we need the height is to feed the machines that process and classify that rock down into specification to make it production ready for quartz countertop slabs so you get rock it goes there you process it, and when it comes out it's smaller or in countertop size would that be a fair analysis it's it's smaller yeah so it would be in a gradation of different sizes so I think like a softener salt all the way down to table salt and everything in between, that's what it'll be doing is breaking it into those sizes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's primarily quartz that you're uh, quartz. processing? It, yeah. We're, yep, quartz countertops. Yep. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Yeah. Um, you said that the building height, the existing building height, I understand that's the same height as the highway right now. Is that the same? same elevation? Same elevation. It's hard to read on your prints. It's the low so. side of the site. It's the same it's the height. Low. It's just that you have a berm in front by the highway. It looks like it's higher, but it's actually that same height elevation from what I... Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Pika, I, you, you, you're probably accurate with that. You, you live out there, so you see it every day. Uh -huh. um, as as uh, Joel has said, the, the existing processing building is on one of the lower parts of the site, so that, that's possible. It's certainly down below the road where it begins, but I don't that know. That dike was, wasn't there, it would be the same level as the highway. Just to okay. clarify that. that. One more question. I have one. Yes. So you described the process of uh, taking the rocks up and uh, then breaking it into the uh, uh, designated or whatever so proper sizes. So th this process of take, taking up the rocks, heavy rocks, of, uh, as you men mentioned, it takes takes up energy. Do you have any other process? The, uh, and then this is ba basically uh, you are taking up, um, the heavy rocks up. Um, and uh, it needs energy. So do you have any other process in your system that can break the same rock with uh, needing less energy? It's in, in the industry, the, the, uh, for breaking of the rocks, breaking the rock uh, needing less energy. Is there any process in your industry? I don't think I'm the qualified Have person. Have you considered anything in your company? I, I, I'm not 
capable of answering that question. I mean, are you talking like electricity? Like the, the obviously power is electricity. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what you're. So uh, using less power, using less energy, yeah. you can break the same rock. Is there any process? Not, not, no, not, I mean, yeah, not that I'm familiar with. Or okay, sorry, can... Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, question on the, uh, your process. <clears throat> I think I understand it. Uh, and uh, I presume that uh, you have uh, a system within the building to control any kind of dust um, that will come about from the processing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And actually, we capture the dust and reuse it in the process of the... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I assume the machinery is a crusher and that is used all the time in various parts of our industry, especially in ready mix. So crushing machines are commonplace in our industry. I would uh, assume that, and I assume that's where you're using it. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question from the board? Yeah, one more question. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joe, uh, jo, um, <laughs> That 53 feet that sticks up that you're getting a variance, I guess, so to speak, for, could that be a different color other than the rust color or the existing building? Could that be more blended in with the, like your blue shirt that, you know, does it have to be that color? And it ain't so much from the highway, but like coming down 41 from Chanhassen or anything like that, you see that building everywhere. If that little tower was a different, just that part that sticks up, could it? in the plan that made me a little bit more Are, the new building the new building and possibly the old existing one if, as time goes on just that part that sticks up that's out of um higher because there's no other buildings going really around there it's just that's the only two buildings that's going to be in that whole area i'm just talking the part part that's up higher that you're getting a variance for that could that be something I'm, a little bit more like a cloud or gray, light gray, does it have to be a rust or a yellow or anything like that? I mean, we, we like the color. We think it, it ties in well with the campus, but. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just have a problem because you see that building and not so much me, I don't care, but coming from, or if you're in a park and stuff, you look across, that building sticks out like a sore thumb. It just does. And I just thought maybe it, just a recommendation that I would kind of, yeah, I, I mean, we put forward our best thought on it mm -hmm. and the best, I mean, we looked at different, you know, rhythms of the, you know, it could all be just rust, but we tried to break up the rhythm architecturally by adding different colors on the main elevations of the building. Even like black, you're, you know, that's one of your colors, the black, could it be black and then rust below or something? I don't, I just, I don't know. I just think that's going to stick out like a, and not the whole thing, just that part that sticks up beyond. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if. I guess we'll, we can. I can ask the architect to look into it as well. I mean, you make it black. That's all. Contrast against the sky. That's all I ask. Yeah. So we'll we'll have them look into it. And thank you. Appreciate, appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I got one more question. Yeah. Uh, do you have a sense at this point on your uh, incoming product? Is that the distribution between uh, over the road and over by rail? What the percentage would be? Uh, I don't know if I could give you a percentage, okay. but, but I can just tell you the majority of the product coming into the site will be coming via rail. Okay. And then the material going out of this, there will be a milk run between this site and our factory yeah. and Lee Sewer. Okay. And you're so, going to have a... Uh, <clears throat> I'm just thinking that I know you're, we aren't going to be ready to talk about egress and ingress yet for, over, for trucking, but I'm sensing that the uh, major portion of your incoming product will be coming by rail just by the mere sense of what it is and the size of it and what the weight will be. Yes, sir. The, okay. the majority will come via yeah. rail. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Not. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anybody would like to open up uh, a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Have a motion to open the public hearing? Second. I have a motion second to open the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 In favor say nay. 
Public hearing is open. Anybody like to address the board regarding this variance? No one wants to address the board. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll move. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say nay. And your wishes on this and that. Remember, Marty was kind of suggesting that we continue because the township wants to address the board later. Well, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we continue this item until the next meeting in May. I have a motion a second. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion second to continue. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say nay. Uh, this uh, request for variance has been uh, continued. Anything else, uh, Brad, you need from the board? We have a motion to close uh, the Board of Adjustment. So moved. I'll second. I have a motion to second to close the Board of Adjustment. All in favor say aye. 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 In favor say nay. Board of Adjustment is closed. Turning over to the Planning Commission. Call to order the April 8th, 2024 Scott County Planning Advisory Commission meeting. And we'll start with our roll call and introductions. Commissioner Hussein. Present. Commissioner Pika. Here. Commissioner Robbins. Here. Commissioner Huber. Here. Commissioner Von Hoff. Here. Commissioner Henches. Here. Commissioner Watson. Here. Uh, also, uh, in the uh, Chamber this evening, uh, we have Brad Davis, our planning manager, at the end of the podium. Next to him is Rachel Nasbush, the uh, 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 deputy clerk <laughs> to the board. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have Marty Schmidt, our zoning administrator, in the audience, Greg Wagner, our principal planner, is here, I believe, and uh, Nathan Hall is here as well. And Tom Wolf, our county commissioner, is here also. Uh, the first item, or the second item we have on our agenda this evening is the approval of the February 12th, 2024 Planning and Advisory Commission meeting minutes. The commissioners have all had an opportunity to review the minutes. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes as printed? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the minutes as written. <laughs> I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Huber. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robbins. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I will call for a vote. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. At this time, uh, I will entertain a motion to open the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to enter? So move. I have a motion by Commissioner Huber. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Commissioner Pika. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All items listed are on the consent agenda are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a Planning Commission board member or a member of the public so requests, in which event the item will be moved from the consent agenda to be considered separately. This evening we have only one item on the consent agenda. It's uh, number 2024-010. It's a request to approve interim use permit to operate a temporary asphalt plant during the 2024 mining season. Valley Paving Incorporated applicant and Ted G and Mary R. Cordner property owners in Section 5 and 32 of Bell Plain and St. Lawrence Townships. Would anyone like to have that removed from the consent agenda for separate consideration? Okay. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Huber, second. Or second. I'll second. Commissioner Robbins, a second by uh, Commissioner Hensis. All in favor, vote aye. 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 I will now entertain a motion to approve the single item, 3-1, request to approve the interim use permit and to operate a temporary asphalt plant during the 2024 mining season, Valley Plaving Incorporated applicant, and Ted G. and Mary R. Cordner, property owners in Section 5 and 32 of Bell Plain and St. Lawrence Townships. Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Commissioner Watson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robbins. All in favor, vote aye. 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 That item has been approved now through the consent agenda. Um, the next item we have this evening is a public hearing. It's number 2024-013, request to approve a conditional 
use permit for trailer utility recreational and equipment and cargo sales and service center central trailer sales applicant and f r h p or l l c property owner in section four of sand creek township and mr wagner will be making the staff report good evening mr wagner good evening mr chair commissioners so on the screen is the site location map of the subject parcels located in section nine of sand creek township um, the property for locational purposes is in the Sand Creek Industrial Park, which is just to the uh, west of US Highway 169. Um, and then uh, we have Jordan Avenue and Greystone Lane bordering on the west side. So the request before you tonight, as you indicated, is a conditional use permit for central trailer sales. Um, Brian and Nanette Renstrom. Uh, own central trailer sales and have a location uh, operating in East Bethel, Minnesota that specializes in the sales and service of utility, uh, equipment, dump, enclosed snowmobile and ATV trailers. So they're proposing to uh, use this site, which was previously uh, utilized as a camping RV dealership and service center. So on the aerial photo here, um, should be familiar to the Planning Commission due to uh, previous applications, uh, but this is a 2022 aerial showing how the site was utilized uh, for the Recreational Vehicle uh, Sales and Service Center. So <clears throat> on the property, on the north end is the um, existing sales and service building uh, where their offices and then bays for service of equipment are located and then you can see um, obviously that the previous occupants uh, had um, recreational vehicle uh, display areas extending uh, around that existing building on the middle lot and then on the southern lot. <clears throat> Uh, the property is zone C1, which is our general commercial district, uh, which does allow implement and recreational vehicle sales, service, rental, and display through a conditional use permit. Building on the property is uh, 9,180 square feet and consists of a sales office as well as six service and repair bays. Uh, there are 14 employee parking spaces, nine customer spaces, and uh, two handicapped spaces for parking. The narrative that the applicants provided indicated that they will have 12 uh, full-time employees working on the property once they're up and running. Um, just a site survey of the property um, that I think you've seen before. Uh, so the parking spaces for customers that I referenced are right here um, around the sales area of the building. Um, Central Trailer proposes to locate their uh, outdoor trailer sales in a similar fashion to what was used before. Uh, majority of the property will be for outdoor display of the types of trailers listed, and they will also then use the building for service of those uh, equipment trailers. The one change uh, that was different from the, uh, the camping operations is that they will not be using the southern property. Uh, going back to the aerial photo, only the north two lots are paved, so the southern one uh, was used illegally by the previous operators. They extended their uh, sales display lot onto that property. Uh, Central Trailer has indicated they will barricade that uh, southern lot off until they determine whether they will need that or not. If they do need it in the future um, and they want to pave it, they would just come back to the county and township for review of any uh, storm, mainly stormwater requirements for, um, for creating hard surface on that property. Um, no operational changes are proposed to the site um, as far as uh, uh, occupancy of the building or increased um, use of the building by employees or customers. So this request has been reviewed by Scott County Environmental Services for the compliance with the existing septic system. And environmental services had a memo which was in your packet that they uh, have approved the uh, conditional use permit request as proposed. Um, the only condition that we have in our CUP is that once they are up and running, uh, they would need to have a hazardous waste license. Uh, this will likely be a load generator, so um, that's typical of any business in the county. Um, there are no changes to the proposed building, so no additional building permits are required. And similar, no additional site paving or grading is proposed, so there's no stormwater concerns or impacts either. 
the applicants met with the Sand Creek Town Board on April 4th and received a recommendation from approval or for approval, which was included in your packet tonight. Um, so the township is recommending approval and county staff is recommending approval as well. We would stand for any questions and the applicants are here if you have any questions for them. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Does the commission have any questions? Doesn't appear there are any questions at this time. Thank you for your report, Mr. Wagner. This is a public <coughs> hearing. Uh, Anyone would like to make a comment? Have we opened the public? Please yes. do it or no. Oh, all right. All right. Yes, right now. Is the public hearing open? So, um, anyone who would have questions can come up to the podium at this time about this application. Seeing as no one's moving to come up to the podium at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Huber, second by, or motion by Commissioner Hentges, or Robbins, second by Commissioner <laughs> Huber. All in favor vote aye. 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 At this time, I'll entertain a motion for action on this before us. Mr. Chair, based on criteria for approval, this is the staff report. I recommend approval of the conditions permit for Central Trailer Sales Incorporated to operate a trailer sales and service center and noting that town board has recommended approval i have a motion by commissioner huber do i have a second second I'll second. <laughs> second by commissioner Hentges. is there any discussion before i call for a vote at this time all in favor vote aye aye, aye. opposed motion passes thank you very much uh your additional use permit has been approved our next item this evening is uh, number 2024-011. It's a request to approve preliminary plat for two lots and three outlots and a conditional use permit to construct and operate a rail served material trans loading and processing center on 81.29 acres in the heavy industrial I-2 zoning, Cambria Real Estate Holdings LLC applicant and Great Plains Sand LLC property owner section 33 of Louisville Township. And uh, will be uh, Mr. Schmitz, our planning and zoning administrator, will be making a staff report. Good evening, Mr. Schmitz. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Again, talking about uh, the Shakopee Sand property that Cambria is considering buying. Uh, as you stated, the property is zoned I-2. The request is to plot this into one lot and two out lots and for a conditional use permit to operate a rail served warehouse and processing facility for quartz material used at their at their manufacturing facilities. Uh, on the screen again is the site location map for the property, east of 169, west of the Minnesota River Valley floodplain and US Fish and Wildlife Service property. Property is made up right now of three parcels, this T-shaped parcel here on the south, this piece here, and then the property here to the north. There is a UP rail line that I didn't mention during the variance presentation that runs kind of diagonally through the northern portion of the property. This, this UP rail line then parallels 169, goes down to Jordan, then up to New Prague. And, and we think it serves one, one customer up in New Prague, Chart Industries. And it's, it's very lightly used rail line, but it does dissect uh, a portion of their property. Here again is the aerial photo of the, of the property they're proposing. The bulk of their development will be built down in the southern portion of the property. On the north end of the property, you got Pika Creek running through here from east to west. Pika Creek's a DNR protected waterway. So uh, frontage road that would extend up to Smith Drive here would need to get a DNR permit to cross Pika Creek. Um, other other um, maybe landmarks you know, this is the Seavers Corn Maze property here where they have their seasonal events. Uh, J. Pika's cabinet shop is here, home further back. There are two residential properties to the north of the north of the site here. Both of these parcels are zoned industrial. Um, this is the Q Prime property again to the south. JMH land has a purchase agreement on that. And then you've got uh, interlock concrete products down here, um, final grade excavating. So it is in an industrial industrial area. 
to again the site plan for for the facility uh, as we discussed during the variance the container yard uh, on the east side of the facility that sort of the warehouse processing building existing processing building um, there'll be a couple stormwater facilities associated with this development the couple stormwater facilities located here to the north uh, other stormwater, predominantly from this area, will be directed to the south here. Much of these stormwater facilities on the south were developed initially during the uh, Shakopee sand mining processing uh, development on the property. Our natural resources engineer has reviewed the resource management uh, plan for the project. There was a memo in your, uh, with your agenda here tonight. Uh, the applicant has responded to those comments and we are waiting for uh, feedback from our, our natural resources engineer but we we anticipate that all those comments can be can be addressed uh, primary and alternate drain field site are located here in the center of the property uh, initially cambria was proposing two lots as part of this plot one lot for the processing building here to the south and one lot for the rail served yard, uh, warehouse to the north because there, were, because there were no septic sites on this area to the south due to the mining, uh, they combined the entire uh, area in this middle section all into one lot. So it's one lot consisting of about 66 acres. They've identified two uh, septic sites. These septic sites are actually over 5,000 square, square feet in area as required by county ordinance. Uh, there are two outlots as part of the plot. This sliver of property here on the west side of the railroad being plotted as an out lot. And then there's the property between 169 and that first rail line here that Cambria is not proposing to develop at this time that they're looking at plotting as an out lot could be developed into something in the future. Um, but right now there's, there's no plans for, for any development of that portion of the property. Here's the, the grading plan for the site again. Uh, shows kind of a cut area here around the uh, rail serve warehouse. My understanding they had to drop that area in elevation to, a, to account for the grade on the rail line serving the, serving the building. So there'd be you know, a significant cut, it looks like, through here to get that to an elevation that works for that building. And then the other two stormwater ponds down here. This is the landscaping plan uh, for the property. Our ordinance requires, I believe, like 193 landscape units uh, based on the perimeter area of, of this site. Cambria is proposing 196, so slightly more than what, what we require. Combination of the overstory, coniferous, uh, ornamental trees, along with shrubs, uh, perennial plants and grasses down around the building. Uh, the focus of the landscaping plan is along the frontage road, which runs along the eastern, eastern portion of the property here, and then the entrance to the facility here, and at the front of both of the buildings in this area here and here. So it, it complies with the requirements in our ordinance, focuses on the areas <coughs> of the property that our ordinance wants landscaping plans to focus on. Most significant issue with this site is the access um, to the property. Uh, right now, there is an uh, interchange at 14 and 169 to the north. <coughs> that ties in with Red Rock Drive that you can access Smith Drive from. To the south is Bluff Drive down here. The county is in the process of constructing an overpass and then uh, access lanes at this location. Uh, that that uh, overpass will probably start construction later this year and be complete next year. So this property will be in between two interchange areas on 169. So it's important to the county to remove the direct access to 169 and develop a frontage road system to serve uh, the development of the property through the site. Did your screen go black? You still have your screens, so you can still see what's going on? Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. My, mine, went, yes. <laughs> mine went black here, but I, I do have the, the, have the laptop. So on the screen, you can see a site plan that was actually developed by JMH Land, who has a purchase agreement on the, on the Q Prime property to the south of the Cambria piece. So this would be the area between Bluff Drive and, and the Cambria site. 
Um, they're proposing, or the thought process is uh, to access Bluff Drive at Jordan Avenue here where there's a, a T, T access, and and then extend up through this property. No, we lost it. We lost it. Oh. <laughs> it's not a pretty picture, though. <laughs> <laughs> we have the picture there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so access to Bluff would be down here. Hopefully, we can get this access. This property here is actually owned by the Bennett family, who has a purchase, or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service essentially has a purchase agreement to buy that. Uh, so we're, we're working with all parties to try and make that connection there. That frontage road, uh, JMH and Wyan would like to extend along the south side of the pond developed as part of the, the mining process, and then parallel 169 up to Cambria here. One of the issues that we're in, Cambria is a little bit ahead of JMH land, and JMH land will probably be coming forward later this year, assuming they, they finalize their purchase come forward to this board with development proposal for the site. Um, right now, this is in concept stage. Once that happens, this right of way would be dedicated and the road could be constructed through, through that portion of the property. This portion down here, uh, assuming U.S. Fish and Wildlife acquires that from the Bennett, then we would work with them to get the right of way through that area. So while pieces are coming into, coming into place here, it's going to take some time, and we're going to need to develop a, a developer's agreement between Cambria, Scott County, Sand Creek Township, because this is Sand Creek Township to the south, and Louisville Township, because it's Louisville Township to the north. So the road will be um, owned by both townships. And JMH Land or Q Prime, whoever owns that property there. So essentially five parties involved in this developer's agreement, so it's getting quite complicated to the south. To the north, you can see on the, I'm gonna to go to the site plan here. You can see on the site plan, they're proposing that to cul de sac right now at this location here, which is where the access is to 169. Mm -hmm. But Cambria is looking at dedicating right away to the north up to Smith Drive. Um, we recognize that there are some challenges with connecting to Smith Drive as well because we have to cross Pika Creek and, and that floodplain, and then we need to do improvements to Smith Drive in all likelihood at the, at the railroad crossing. Um, so there are challenges going in both directions that we need to develop um, a better understanding, I think, between the county, both townships, the applicant as to who's responsible for what roles. We made a big step, I think, here this morning. We had a, a meeting with all the parties involved, and I think we've got consensus on how to move forward. But over the next month, we want to work on that developer's agreement, get things down in writing. Uh, the township heard this request at their meeting last Thursday night. They continued it to get more clarity on when and how this road's going to get built, who's going to be paying for it, um, and to make sure we're going to be removing our direct access to 169. We may allow the one at 169 access or for construction and maybe for initial startup until we get one of the roads built but we want to have it clearly identified as to how those roads are going to get built and who's going to, who's going to be responsible for what. So that's, that's where we're at with, with the road. We just feel like we're not quite ready to, to take action on this request until more of those details get worked out. And I think it's in any, everybody's best interest, the counties, the townships, the developers' interest to get those things worked out um, before we proceed any further. Uh, on the road situation. Really the the other issue, here again, the buildings, we've talked about those, the elevations. That's the plot. Um, this is the, the lighting plan uh, and, and there's a comment in the planning report. I think one of the one of the lighting fixtures was 30 feet in height where our, our lighting uh, maximum height is 25 feet in the industrial district. So we need to have that addressed before lighting fixtures get installed. But other than that, uh, the lighting plan conforms with our requirements as well. So with that, I can stand for any questions. I know, like I said, the applicant is here. 
Township Louisville is, is represented here as well tonight. Uh, Sand Creek is not. So I'll stand for any okay. other questions. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Schmidt, is there any questions? Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Um, you know, I know this was said, but can you tell me again what sort of time schedule you have on um, on when these things are going to happen? You know, we don't have them now. Uh, when do they start and, and kind of when do they finish? And I have one more after that. Um, as far as the road construction predominantly? Well, the road construction probably. and then the actual, the, the buildings and everything like that. So the applicant would like to start the buildings as soon as the CUP and the plot are approved. And, and they would need to utilize the direct access to 169 to commence with the, that building uh, construction. Uh, the actual operations, Joel can maybe answer that a little bit better. My understanding is they'll probably have uh, partial operation of the site in the fall of 2025 with more full operations of the facility in 2026. Okay, uh, yep. that's kind of what I was looking for. And then maybe the applicant tell me when, when this is all up and running, um, how many people are you going to have here working? I mean, is this a, I wouldn't think it's work heavy, but I'm going to have 15 people, 20. How many people are going to be working here? Sure. Thanks for the question. The, Marty mentioned this during the Board of Adjustments portion. The startup of this being late 25, what we're going to build, on, I'll get to answering the question. That's fine. Just uh, the journey there, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> what we intend to build by late 25 and have operational is the warehouse. So that's on the north side, the storage yard, and the high portion of the new processing building. For a period of about 18 months to two years, We'll be at about 20 employees on this site and generating five to seven trucks a day. Okay. As we continue to expand the site and adjust operations, the intent is that this site will grow up to around 100 employees. And then the uh, rail traffic plus truck traffic will be commiserate with that. And um, so then at that point, the intent, like what I put in the narrative is to say that these roads would be built upon the earliest construction season that all of the consents are in place. So meaning, uh, you know, the property of the South conveys, the Bennett property conveys, and then everyone can make those agreements and we'll be breaking ground on that, you know, as soon as that's physically possible. Well, Mr. Chair, if I could just add a comment. That's quite a, you're going to have quite an operation, and when you get all up, you're going to have many truckloads or trainloads of product going down to Lesur, and you're going to have up to 100 people working there. So that, that's what you said, right? It, yes, sir, and it's a 24-7 operation. The primary operations would be first and second shifts, and then during the off hours, like weekends, would be maintenance time as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I, I guess, uh, Marty, uh, as far as the road construction, Right now, they're going to access 169, the existing access, until they get the roads built, correct? Correct. And, and, and that's the, one of the key questions is how quickly can, can we get these roads yeah. constructed? And I can understand going to Bluff, uh, Bluff Drive and they're going to have an overpass. Why do they need to run up to Smith? Do they just want another access out? I think we want a continuous front road. road system okay. through the property for connectivity to keep traffic off okay. 169 so people don't have to go and get on 169. Where's Smith Drive? Is it by 150th? Smith Drive is by 100. Yeah, let me. I, I couldn't figure out exactly where Smith Drive was. So on the site, Smith Drive is essentially this northern property line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. it ties so it, in it, comes, it ties into this Red Rock Drive here. Gotcha. Which access is 160. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? Commissioner Pico? Chair, um, it was listed in here that the gravel between uh, the access on 169 now and to the south, that uh, gravel, um, I think that was old now. I think that was probably updated since that was written in here, I'm assuming. Yeah, not going to have a gravel road running as a frontage road. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Pika, the, the mention to the gravel road, when, when Shakopee Sand mined this property, as part of their reclamation plan for Shakopee Sand, they were required, as part of their reclamation, to construct a gravel township road through the site. Because we have development occurring now, um, with the construction of the road, both townships require paved township roads. 
for, for development. If we didn't have any development happening and we were just working with the reclamation of the mine to get a road through, we'd probably be looking at a gravel road through the site. Gotcha. But because Thank we you. have Cambria, another developer to the south that's looking at uh, creating lots and putting in you know, industrial uses, we're looking at a paved, paved township road. So I can assume that dike or that berm will be taken down to build that frontage road type thing, I'm assuming? The, the, construction plans, the construction plans for the road are not complete as of yet, so I don't know that I can answer that. Yeah, I guess a little bit of the, the, the berm is already taken down as part of the reclamation. Part of it, yeah. And then so what's there is kind of natural. And so there will be a cut to it. The extent to, of it, um, you know, is going to be, it's not going to be significant, I guess. So it'll actually probably be more on the south property, wouldn't you think? That it would be, we're going to have more or less, it's going to be a rise right at that property line right here. The frontage road will come up right where the hand is, and it'll kind of come up. Because from that point to where the storage yard is, the container yard, it drops like 11 feet, 12 feet, something like that. So it's a pretty, we'll be cutting back up into that hill, so to speak. And then it'll come up, and then it'll tie into the existing access that's there. Okay. So that access is a control for us on that grade. Does that answer your question? Um, I think that answers it, because then most of the activity of being blinded type because of that berm would be there. Yeah, I mean, again, I think you're going to see, like, I don't know, we could flip back to the grading plan, but I think a lot of the activity on the container yard plus the landscaping plus the existing natural berm will be screened more or less from 169. The north side of the site where we're building that ware warehouse, you, you can see the survey stakes out there right now. So that's, you'll be able to see that, but I think that building is a pretty good looking building, if I may say so. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah. Are you going to put a dragon on that or like a Cambria type well, the dragon? Yeah, the front of the buildings to the south. I'm just kidding. Oh, it's fine. In front of the buildings to the south, and then to Marty mentioned this earlier, you can see there's a, about an eight foot cut there to bring that building down lower. And one of the reasons is obviously to pick up the grade to the rail, but it was also in collaboration with this group about getting that right away dedicated for that road. So we were trying to get the building further away from that road because, uh, you know, we don't want the building right next to the road because we got a train coming in there and container handlers and all that stuff. So, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not excited about berms. So I just let's curious if that was coming down yeah so. this is going to have this will have a cut down here you know we'll cut this hill down and then it's going to be a fill up in here too so it'll be nice when thank you are there other questions yes what saying? mr chair and uh, i don't know i'm stuck at the height of the, the requirement for the uh, height of the building one of those buildings that the... Uh, the tall building? The um, tall building. So um, I want to... Uh, I'm, I'm not very clear about your explain, uh, explanation about the requirement that you uh, take up the rocks and then in order to split it, uh, you, you will uh, put them down. So uh, I need a clear process i'm not able to process that uh, so can you give me an answer about uh, the process that is involved in taking the rocks up and uh, then the splitting it into the right sizes the, uh, as per your specifications uh, i'll try so, I'll try my best. I so want the, an ex explanation on that. Okay, so the way the material moves from the material stockpile, mm -hmm. it gets conveyed up to the top yeah. of that. So it's just a simple conveyor, just like you see all over. And that, to your question about power, not much power, but it is used on a conveyor, so it doesn't heat up the material or transform the material in transit to the top. How, how big are, uh, what is the size of the rocks that about you're two take, inch. taking up? Okay. About two inch. So then it goes to the top, and then it will go through a series, stacked series of the material crushers or rock crushers. Okay. 
and then it'll go through those classifiers as it works its way down, and we need three levels of that. Each one okay. adds up to about 100 feet. So uh, these rocks are not uh, like boulders or uh, no. big, big rocks? No, they're okay. two inches, oh. just like the landscaping rocks in your front in the front of your house. And then so it, it goes through the conveyor belt. It'll go on top of a conveyor belt up to the top. It gets fed into the machine. And the reason that building's tall for that is so we can use gravity, so we don't have to use extra power or extra things like conveyors or air compressors or negative pressure. So gravity is the best physic or the best tool to use to move that material through the processing classifiers that break that material down. And so gravity gives us the most consistent feed to feed that, that machine so it keeps running consistently. When it doesn't run consistent, that's not good. And so, uh, it, I, you know, short of just saying it breaks down the rocks as it goes down into the different classifiers, that's effectively what's happening. And then, it, you know, the different parts of that product are used for different uh, products we produce. Oh, that's pretty good. So the, the height of the building is really connected to, I guess it could have answered your question more effectively in saying the height is actually how to reduce power that's used in doing that. Because otherwise we'd be conveying it up and down and back and around. And instead it goes to the top and then works its way down to the bottom, gets put into bags. Those bags go into the container. The containers go into the storage yard. Demand calls for the factory, and then they go down to the factory. But this much height, this is, uh, you were talking about 130 feet. Uh, That's 103, but yeah. 103. It's tall, sure. It, that, that, that is uh, how I need to be taken. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this time from the commission? Uh, this is a public hearing, and the podium is available. If you'd like to come up and make comment on this application, uh, just come up to, and uh, sign in. There's a sign-in sheet, and then sign-in back there. Is that okay? Well, there's right a, I think yeah, I think there's a sign-in sheet. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not over there, but there should be one there. And then just start with your name, if you will. Okay. Uh, my name is Bruce Edgar. I live on one five one two six Smith Drive. And I'm right off of the, I don't know if you could bring that one up of the red. You're talking about the first one, Bruce? Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Oh. I live right here. I've got another neighbor that lives yeah, they there. Can't, they can't see that, Bruce, so. Yep. Maybe you can show us. This one here? Yep, help I'm the out, first party. one. So you're right We're there. We're still not Where my cursor is? Yep. yep. All right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I just had some concerns about when they do run where they're going to run the frontage road, and even if it does connect with Red Rock, that can be a pretty gnarly intersection with the trucks coming down, turning. You know, I just, I foresee some accidents there. That that whole interchange isn't the best right there. I mean, we got a stop sign, but I don't know what if they're going to do anything with as far as uh, redesigning that. And I just wanted to know, as a property owner, like, how much land this might take for me. I don't know if it would take a corner or what, because I'm just like right on here. And I just wanted the board to be aware of that, that there are a couple of us that live down there. Yep. So that's all I got. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you for your comment. Do you want to? Uh, Mr. Commissioner, if I could just address that. that. That is one of the questions and one of the reasons we're looking at a continuance here. This road's gonna to need to be built to township standards. The township engineers are gonna be involved with the design and the layout of the road. So some of those questions are still yet to be answered for, for, for this neighbor here, but there, there very likely could be an impact to his property. So uh, great question. Okay. okay, so that will be considered in, in the ADTs that will be picked up on the road by the use here and the projected use in constructing the road and designing the intersections. Correct. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments at this time?
I'm Bob Peeper, I'm Louisville Township Supervisor. And as you've heard people talking about the process and the, and the whole plan, you've heard, if this happens, if that happens, where are you gonna put the road? Well, we don't know, we have, it's an if, where it's going. Um, so this whole process is putting the cart before the horse. Um, at our last meeting, we had a drawing that came up here earlier, and as far as where the frontage road was going to go, it showed it on the easement of XL Energy's power line. Well, you can't build a road on an XL Energy's power line. Um, so there's so many things, and all this came the day before our meeting. So. As a Louisville Township Supervisor, our planner, our engineer, our attorney, nobody has the time to look at anything. You know, they wanted, they were trying to push to, for you guys to pass this preliminary plan. Well, I don't know how you can pass something when you don't have it down on paper. We hear a lot of, you know, uh, Joel does a great job of explaining everything explanations in this world this time of the year it does everything can change so for Louisville Sand Creek I'm sure is in the same process on their end there's so many things I don't know if this can get done by me um, some of this might take six months to do so for us at Louisville we're asking that this get tabled a minimum of a month, and maybe further. Um, you know, um, in there we were talking about the Smith Drive connection. Um, I talked with several people this morning, or this afternoon. I know there was a like a four hour meeting this morning on trying to hash some of this out. Well, the county is asking for a public frontage road. Um, it came up in our meeting with Joel that maybe they could have a private road until the issues with the railroad get taken care of, and then it would get turned over as a public road. Well, we're looking at the township. If this is going to be a public road, what traffic is going to be on that public road? You have, I forget the number of trucks that he was going to, that Cambria was going to have going back and forth. And then the future buyer of the, the Q Prime property, we don't know how many trucks that they're going to have. So who's going to maintain this road with all this truck traffic? Those questions are all wide open. So I guess I'm going to ask that for the township to have you guys table this and we'll work on doing our homework so you guys have a better idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <coughs> Would anyone else like to make comment at this time? At this point, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Hanson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Pika. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Mr. Yes, Chair. Sir. Yeah, I take no what, uh, what you just said uh, seriously. I mean, I think there's a lot of good points to that. There are so many unknowns on this. If there were no unknowns right now, I'd almost be inclined to go ahead and say approve this. I mean, but... There are so many in terms of roads and where they go uh, uh, that would change that, that I don't know that in good conscience we could make a motion now that we might have to come back and amend or things might change. So um, I tend to agree with the speaker, Mr. Chair, that, that we should table or continue this to a future meeting. Yeah. I, I think it would be premature to take any more action. Mr. Chairman? I just have a question because ready, fire, aim is not my favorite exercise. <laughs> if we table this and 
a, what are realistically what are we looking at? Are we looking at yeah, that's good know, a month or two months or the rest of my life or? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, maybe Hedges. very short. <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. Pieper said, there was a four-hour meeting this morning with with all the parties involved. So I'm I'm thinking you're looking at a month, two months. Okay. Yeah. Could be longer. I mean, and nope. take the right. time we need. We are under a uh, 60 day lot for taking action on the request. So we'll have to, you know, work with the applicant on extensions if need be. We do have 120 days to take action. I think that takes us out into June. Okay. So, you know, if we need to come back sooner, we will. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be willing to make a motion here to table the uh, uh, this project uh, for a minimum of one month. And extended maybe to another nine uh, to a total of 90 days. I'll, I'll second that work, yeah. Or we could do it to a date not certain, could we? Yeah, <clears throat> in the past, sometimes you do a date not certain, you're just going to table it Rather to a future than, meeting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. are you comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that amendment, yep. uh, second, and I'm comfortable with that. Okay, I do have a motion before the uh, commission at this time to table that motion. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? The motion has been tabled. Thank you very much for your input this evening and for uh, coming and testifying. Our uh, next item is the planning manager's report, I believe. And I'll go to Mr. Davis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll give you a rundown of items that you recommended to the county board, and the county board then took final action. So back on February 20th, the board did approve the preliminary and final plat of Endeavor, Endeavor Second Edition and the conditional use permit for an indoor storage business use that was in Newmarket Township. They also approved the preliminary and final plat and conditional use permit for Mary's Town Estates that was in Louisville Township. On March 5th, they approved the interim use permit for the expansion of the Miranda Mine in Belle Plaine Township. On March 19th, they approved the uh, fourth amendment to the development agreement for Shakopee Sand Mining, the site that we've been looking at here tonight. That was in Louisville and Sand Creek Township. They approved the preliminary and final plat of Schumann Third Edition in Spring Lake Township. They approved the preliminary and final plat of the Maripoctal Edition that was in Blakely Township. Last week on April 2nd, they approved the Sand Creek Comprehensive Plan Amendment. Um, the Met Council uh, made their findings, found that it was uh, not in conflict with the regional plans, and notified the county to put the plan into uh, amendment into effect, and that's what they did on April 2nd. So that comp plan it, uh, amendment is now finalized. Um, so that is some board actions. The only other update is you may have heard our um, newspaper of record that we publish all of our public hearing notices is going to be ending the publication. That's true with all the newspapers here locally, which is pretty sad. Yeah. So we are actively looking at what we will do to replace that public hearing notice here in the next few weeks. Um, we're required to publish public hearing notices for all our hearings in the newspaper of record. And so um, our attorney's office is identifying what our alternate can be until we identify a new paper of record. That's usually something we do with January 1st of every year. Um, so we'll keep you posted, but- uh, Is this something that the statute might change eventually to do some type of other media format than a newspaper? This has been discussed, obviously. I think a lot of cities are probably asking that same question because we're all scrambling to figure out. Sure, it's a big it. deal. It's yeah. a really big deal for, uh, say, Shakopee and you both. Um, you know, the first time someone doesn't know about a public hearing, they come in, they say we weren't told, and then you got chaos. So um, please keep us advised. Um, and, and, the and, and the townships. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, can I ask one more sure. thing? I, there was an article today um, about um, a lottery that's going to happen for, um, what am I going to say, uh, legalized pot or something like that. Do you know anything about that? And where are we on our thing? Are we waiting? I know there's a moratorium, but where are we on it? Yeah, it seems to be an evolving topic. Um, I'm hearing more and more that they're making some amendments to the cannabis bill. And what I'm hearing is those amendments take even more local control away from the process. They're not going to be looking for cities and counties to um, provide input when they're getting licensed. 
and that we all just need to follow those setback standards that were set in law. So I'm not even sure we're going to get a model ordinance anymore from the state. I think as I'm seeing the bills, we're going to have very little influence on where these different uses can pop up. It, to me, it looks like the state will determine where they're going to be and how they're going to be licensed. Um, that's how I'm seeing it. I don't know if others are seeing it differently. Finally, if I could, Mr. Chairman, didn't the state, uh, we talked the last time about this potential ordinance where you could build a threeplex or a fourplex on a single family, and I, uh, that's uh, a Shakopee issue too, and I think that's dead now in the state legislature. It's not going anywhere. That's what I've heard from just looking at the papers or media that that is dead. At least not for this session. Not for this session, but it could come back in another session. Who controls that? Is that the state? Or would it be the bank council or who? Uh, the way the law was written, it was state state law. State it would, would be saying that. State, it would apply to every city right. in the state. Yeah. And so that's a little bit of an overreach as far as I'm concerned, but whatever. Well, the, well, the thing about it, if I could, Mr. Chair, the thing about it is, sure. uh, depending on what you figure about duplex, there was no provision for any public hearing. It could happen without any public input. I find that. Oh, God incredible uh, 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 for all the way we've come in public hearings over the years that they would even try that yeah so I predict that that's going to be quite a deal whenever it comes up you know yeah. it'll be about a lot of fighting there'd be fighting it, it has a lot of implications if you understand planning and everyone on this board understands the planning process and, yeah. and it's yeah. a, an interesting thing that it also has a lot of support mm -hmm. I've talked to representative Tad key and I said, I don't like that, and I don't like public hearings. He said, oh, there's a lot of good. So it's got some support as well. So we'll see. Why have any rules? Yeah. yeah. Well. That's all I have for now. Are we, are we going to be redundant? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think there's that. But I think when it, comes from you. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to housing, I'm hearing more and more the state wants to have more control than local right. local bodies like New York. Right. So. Right. Uh, now, anything else for the cause before? Okay. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Secretary Hanches, second by Commissioner Hugh, or Commissioner Robbins. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, you know very much. I know. One of my nights. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah,